The U.S. Navy and Marine Corps spent a lot of time on aircraft carriers and amphibious assault ships respectively, according to the mission specifics at any given time. The flight deck crew is capable of keeping a small number of fighter jets on the deck of these warships. There's not enough space to actually keep the tens of aircraft stationed on a typical carrier or even the massive cargo and equipment that would be necessary for the missions. Keep watching this video as we explain about extremely bizarre technology behind aircraft carrier elevator. Aircraft carriers are some of the most technologically advanced warships in the world. They are equipped with a wide range of systems and equipment that are designed to support the launch and recovery of aircraft. The U.S. Navy has over a lot of years developed an assault support system that synchronizes the horizontal and vertical stimulations of troops, cargo and vehicles through the ships. The vertex movements are largely stimulated using the elevator technology. One of the earliest forms of this technology was found in the Lexington-class aircraft carriers in 1927. One of the most critical systems on an aircraft carrier is the elevator, which is used to move aircraft between the flight deck and the hangar deck. These elevators are incredibly complex and sophisticated pieces of technology and are responsible for the safe and efficient movement of aircraft on and off the carrier. The elevators on an aircraft carrier are typically located on the starboard and port sides of the flight deck. They are large structures that are capable of lifting aircraft weighing up to 100,000 pounds. These elevators are powered by a combination of electric motors and hydraulic systems, which allow them to move at high speeds and with great precision. The elevator platform is typically divided into two sections, the upper and the lower. The upper section is the part that sits on the flight deck, and the lower section is the part that sits on the hangar deck. The two sections are connected by a series of cables and pulleys, which are used to lift and lower the platform. The elevator platform is controlled by a complex system of sensors and computer systems. These systems are used to monitor the position and movement of the platform, as well as the aircraft that are being moved. The sensors are also used to detect any potential hazards or obstacles that may be in the way of the elevator, such as other aircraft or equipment. One of the most critical components of the elevator system is the braking system. This system is responsible for slowing down and stopping the elevator platform, and is critical for ensuring the safety of the aircraft and the personnel who are working on the flight deck. The braking system is typically controlled by a series of electromechanical brakes, which are activated when the elevator platform reaches a certain speed or position. There are two main types of braking systems used in elevator systems, mechanical brakes and electromagnetic brakes. Mechanical brakes use friction to stop the elevator car, while electromagnetic brakes use the force of an electromagnetic field to stop the elevator car. Mechanical brakes are the most common type of braking system used in elevator systems. They consist of a brake shoe that is pressed against a brake drum, creating friction that stops the elevator car. The brake shoe is typically made of a durable material, such as cast iron or carbon ceramic, and the brake drum is typically made of steel. The brake shoe is activated by a brake actuator, which is controlled by the elevator's control system. One of the main advantages of mechanical brakes is that they are relatively simple and easy to maintain. They also have a good level of reliability and can withstand high temperatures and heavy loads. However, mechanical brakes can wear out over time and need to be replaced which can be costly and time-consuming. Electromagnetic brakes, on the other hand, use the force of an electromagnetic field to stop the elevator car. They consist of an electromagnet, a rotor, and a stator. When the electromagnet is energized, it creates a magnetic field that attracts the rotor, which is connected to the elevator car. This creates resistance that slows down and eventually stops the elevator car. One of the main advantages of electromagnetic brakes is that they are highly reliable and require little maintenance. They are also very efficient and can stop the elevator car quickly and smoothly. However, they are more complex and expensive than mechanical brakes and may require specialized training to repair and maintain. In addition to the braking system, elevator systems and aircraft carriers also have safety features to ensure the safety of passengers and cargo such as emergency brakes, safety gears, and overspeed governors. The emergency brakes are typically mechanical brakes that are activated in the event of a power failure or other emergency. Safety gears are mechanical devices that engage if the elevator car exceeds a certain speed and prevent it from falling. Overspeed governors are mechanical devices that automatically stop the elevator car if it exceeds a certain speed.
In conclusion, the braking system of an elevator system in an aircraft is a crucial component that ensures the safe operation of the elevator. Mechanical brakes and electromagnetic brakes have their own advantages and disadvantages, and the choice of braking system will depend on the specific requirements of the aircraft and the elevator system. Another important component of the elevator system is the emergency power supply. This system is used to power the elevator in the event of a power failure and is critical for ensuring that the aircraft can be safely moved in an emergency situation. The emergency power supply is typically powered by a series of generators or batteries and is activated when the main power supply is lost. The braking emergency power supply typically consists of a battery backup system, which is able to provide power to the elevator system in the event of a power failure. The battery system is designed to have a sufficient capacity to power the elevator system for a specific period of time, typically a few minutes to allow for safe evacuation of the aircraft. In addition to the battery backup system, the braking emergency power supply also includes a control system that manages the power supply to the elevator system. This control system is responsible for monitoring the power supply to the elevator system and activating the battery backup system in the event of a power failure. The control system also monitors the state of charge of the battery backup system and ensures that it is fully charged and ready for use at all times. The braking emergency power supply system also includes a monitoring system that constantly checks the performance of the braking system and sends a signal to the control system if any malfunction is detected. This signal triggers the control system to activate the emergency brake and stop the elevator. It is important to note that the braking emergency power supply system must meet a number of safety requirements and standards set by regulatory bodies, such as the Federal Aviation Administration and the International Civil Aviation Organization. These requirements include regular testing and maintenance of the system to ensure that it is in proper working order at all times. The elevators on an aircraft carrier are incredibly expensive to build and maintain. The cost of a single elevator can be over $15 billion, and the maintenance and replacement parts are also very costly. The reason for such a high cost is due to a combination of factors, including the complexity of the design, the materials and technology used, and the challenging operating environment. First, the complexity of the design of elevators on an aircraft carrier is a major factor in the high cost. These elevators must be able to withstand the extreme conditions of an aircraft carrier, including high winds, saltwater exposure, and the constant movement of the ship. This requires the use of specialized materials and advanced technology, such as high-strength steel and advanced control systems, which are costly to produce. Additionally, the elevators must be able to move large, heavy aircraft between decks, which also adds to the complexity and cost of the design. Another factor contributing to the high cost of building elevators on an aircraft carrier is the materials and technology used. The elevators must be equipped with advanced control systems and other technology to ensure safe and efficient operation. Furthermore, the operating environment of an aircraft carrier also contributes to the high cost of building elevators. These ships are constantly in motion and subject to extreme weather conditions, making it difficult to install and maintain the elevators. This requires specialized equipment and personnel, as well as additional safety precautions, which all add to the overall cost. Let us know what you think in the comments section. Don't forget to like, subscribe and click on the bell button to make sure you stay updated on all new videos.